The latest now on the saga of that adopted boy who was sent back to Russia, the Tennessee woman who sent him back on an airplane, the seven-year-old boy, is still refusing to talk to authorities, but she could face child abandonment charges, we're learning. Uh, Tori Hansen claims that she was misled about the boy's psychological problems. It is an extreme case for sure, but statistics do show that many adoptions turn out, well, far from perfect. Families do not always live happily ever after, and Slate Magazine writer K.J. Del Antonio says she can relate. She actually admits she did not love the little girl she adopted from China, and I spoke with her about what she initially went through with her new family uh, earlier tonight. K.J., a, a lot of us were just horrified uh, at the thought of a mother shipping her adopted seven-year-old son back to Russia. You say, though, you understand or you think you understand where she was coming from. I explain that to us. Campbell, uh, adopting an older child as opposed to a baby is a process, and it can be a really painful one. Um, when I first brought home my adopted three-year-old from China, it took her a long time to learn to love me, and it took me a long time to learn to love her. And when I read what Tori Hansen had done to her seven-year-old, I, even with the horror of, of reading about that, I still couldn't help but understand what lengths she must have reached to, to go to that, to go to such extremes. But, but share with us to try to give us a sense for what you were feeling, a little bit of your story, what you were going through. Well, we adopted our daughter in last summer. So she came home in July. And for those first few weeks, I, you know, I would, I would, I would look at her as, as she, as she struggled or, or had a temper tantrum or just, uh, I would just look at her and I, I would think, what, what have we done? What have we done to her? What have we done to us? She would um, struggle to learn to be a sister to, you know, what we had presented to her as, look, this is your new sister and your new brothers. And she would struggle. She would cry. She happened to have lived in a foster home and she would call for her mommy and you know, she knew she didn't mean me, and I knew she didn't mean me. And when she got me in the middle of the night, it was hard for me to see what that did to her. And, you know, I didn't feel like her mommy either. And I I think that's a transition. It's it's a fair. You, you wrote, though, that, that you, and just, I, I think these words are a little bit haunting, that you, you didn't feel like you loved her. I mean, she didn't love you, but you, you didn't love her either. I didn't. For the first uh, few weeks or even months that she was home, I didn't feel like I loved her the way that I wanted to feel like I loved her. I didn't feel like I loved her at all. I felt like I was the mother at a play date that would never end. I There would be moments when I would look at her and say, when will your parents come and get you? And of course, you know, I, I, I am her parents and I signed up to be her parents and I wanted to be her parent, but it, it took time to feel like her parent. I, I was struck by another line from your article. You, you write that, that even the best adoptive parent is just the cleanup crew. I, explain what that means. Well, she was really destroyed by uh, being taken from her loving foster family and you know adopted, which is supposed to be such a happy thing. And of course, she she was abandoned to begin with. It, it's it's not a happy beginning to any story and um, when I it's, it's simply true any even the, the best adoptive parent even if I had been able to walk right into that room and you know love her with all my heart and soul right away even the best adoptive parent is still going to be dealing with what's already happened so is it better now it's absolutely better now. I, I got to ask you finally, because you probably know better than anybody. I mean, what what needs to change so that you don't have a situation like this 
again that we saw, you know, with this mother sticking this kid on the plane. Is it because the system is broken and they're not, there's not enough support there for you when you go through this process? Or parents have, have screwed up expectations about it? What is the biggest problem here? What needs to change is the way that we talk about it. We really romanticize adoption. And because we want it to be the happy ending for a child and for a family, we want it to be a happy ending right away. And we need to talk about this in a different way. We need to talk about it as a process. We need to talk about learning to love our child and learning to be a family and, and becoming a family as opposed to, you know, you're instantly home and it's immediately happy, happily ever after. And the more we talk about it, the, the better that's going to be for both adoptive families and for children. KJ, I, I got to say, I, I just think your honesty is so powerful. Uh, thank you for, for sharing your story with us uh, in the context of all of this. KJ Delantonio, best of luck to you and your family.